Welcome to More Than a Song, where you get a chance to experience great music in an intimate concert setting. You'll also get a chance to go beyond the lyrics with the artist to get the God experience revealed in their journey. Hi, I'm Denise Graves, and on today's show, we will feature Wayne Watson. He's produced 23 number one singles on over 24 albums. Wayne is one of the first Christian artists to be featured on NBC's Tonight Show. Today's program opens up with Finest Hour. What a moment this is. Ain't it good to be alive? There is still time for change in the world, and I believe it can still happen. God has given us life. He has given us bread. And the sun is not set. We are not finished yet. And I tell you, there's got to be a reason. Because I believe that this could be your finest hour. This could be your greatest day. This could be your finest hour. Don't throw it away. Because you just never know. Never know what's around the next bend. There are answers to prayer. So you just can't stop caring. This is not the end. It's not only the young, thank goodness. It's not just the fast or the strong. But to the one who is wise, who will open their eyes to the Spirit of God and to his power, I believe that this could be your finest hour. This could be your greatest day. This could be your finest hour. Grandmother would have called this banging on the piano. This could be your finest hour. This could be your greatest day. This could be your finest hour. Don't throw it away. battered and scarred and the auctioneer felt it was hardly worth his while to waste much time on that old violin but he held it up with a smile well it sure ain't much but it's all we got left I guess we ought to sell it too now who started the bid on this old violin just one more and we'll be through. And he cried, one, give me one dollar. Who'll make it two? Only two dollars. Who'll make it three? Three 
dollars twice now That's a good price now Who's gonna bid for me? Raise up your hand now Don't wait any longer Cause the auction is about to win Who's got four? Just one dollar more Bid on this old violin stood around as the sun was setting low from the back of the crowd a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bone he wiped the dust from that old violin and then he tightened up the string stopped and the auctioneer with a voice that was quiet and low he said now what am I bid for this old violin and then he held it up with the now that's a good price now who's gonna bid for me the people cried out what made the change we don't really understand and the auctioneer stopped and he said with a smile it was the touch of the master's hand No, there's many a man out there with his life out of tune, battered and scarred up with sin. And he gets auction cheap to a thankless world. Well, I'd like some old violin. And then, dear sweet master comes, and the foolish crowd, they seem to never really quite understand. soul and the change that is wrought by one touch of the master's hand yet he cried out one me one thousand who make it two only two thousand who make it three three thousand twice you know that's a good price now who's gonna be for People cried out what made the change. You see, we don't understand. Then the auctioneer stopped at him, and he said with a smile, it was nothing but the touch. Nothing but the touch. Nothing but the touch of the master's hand. Wayne Watson believes his greatest accomplishment is influencing Christian songwriters to be transparent, to artistically shape whatever you're going through, and introduce God's hope into the mix. Recently, Terry Black sat down with Wayne, and we get a chance to take a closer look at this engaging songwriter. Well, Wayne, I'm so excited to be able to spend some time talking with you. You know, I realized you've been around a while. That's a nice way to put it. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I was at Gateway Church on Sunday in Dallas, in the Dallas area, and the guy that introduced me said, Wayne's been around for many, many, not too many, three many. Oh, my goodness. Many, many, many years. I'm like, that's way too much. But yes, 
But you know what? I, I'm thankful to still oh, yes. be in it. You were around, you started not in the Jesus music. You were after that. Yeah, you I'm know? sort of the second generation. Right, of it. absolutely. Late 70s, 78, yeah. 9. I think the first album was in 79 or 80. So, yeah. What would you think would be like your uh, song that sort of everybody started singing or they knew who you were? Well, the very first one was on the first album that was called Touch of the Master's Hand. Oh, and my it's goodness. an old poem yeah. by uh, a lady named Myra Welch. And uh, it was set to music by a young man in Texas named um, Steve Cramp, C R A M P, Cramp. Okay. And uh, I, I wish I had written it. People think I wrote it, but okay. I wish I had written it. But mm -hmm. at that time, I was pretty intent on doing good material. Okay. W it, whether it was mine or somebody else's, I didn't mm -hmm. care. I wanted to do good material. All right. And uh, that was the first song that people knew that I had sung. It's a beautiful song. And I still do it. Oh, do I'll you? probably do it later. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's an awesome song. It just Thanks. touches people's hearts in so you know, many ways. Uh, people bring their teenagers to concerts and in mm -hmm. church services, and they, the teenagers like that song. Really? Yeah, they really embrace that song. Well, you know, I know somebody who they said they got saved listening to that song. Really? Isn't that amazing? It is. Just to hear it how your... It stuns me. Well, your, how your music transcends not only generations, but it touches people. Yeah. And it, they have redemption, eternal life. I know. It's... I, I never thought that was part of the, the thing when I started doing music. I was going to ask, like, when you started, did you sense a calling where you were going to go? I tried to sense a calling. Mm -hmm. I was in that culture of churches where you're called into the ministry. Okay. Yeah. Ministry, <laughs> and uh, and I I wanted it. <laughs> okay. I didn't want to be called to be a missionary, however, because oh, okay. the missionaries came through and showed slides. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> and but you know what? What's what's uh, interesting is I know lots of missionaries. I've never met one missionary that felt like they gave up anything. Oh. I've never met one that felt like they sacrificed anything, hmm. that, and that they could do nothing else. That was what they want to do with their lives. Oh. And I've heard preachers say, if you can do anything else with your life, do it. Don't be a preacher. Don't be a pastor. Mm -hmm. But I, I let the ministry part, I let the ministry part uh, leave that up to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I, I came to this a long time ago. I, I'm not sure I like the term my ministry because okay. it sounds, uh, sounds like I own something that's not really mine. All right. I just sing songs okay. that are on my heart and that I've had from other people and they have eternal truth in them. That's right. And I let God do what he wants to do with that. Mm. Whether it's now or 30 years later or 20 years later, that's his business. Mm. And I stopped counting how many people got saved mm -hmm. listening to music. So, and really your calling is one of obedience. And your gifting is, yeah. Every day. Mm -hmm. And some days I do better than others. I, that's how we all are, yeah, isn't it? I, I, in the chaos of trying to get here through the airports last night and missing flights and losing things, uh, I went to bed last night and I thought, and I literally said out loud, Lord, if, if this was a test, I know I failed miserably because <laughs> <laughs> my attitude really got bad. Oh, well, traveling is always a challenge. But I got it? up this morning and I, I said, thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Amen. And that I sounds like, like that. a song. I, hey, hey, <laughs> yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Well, I know one of the songs that you've written, or I don't know if you've written or you definitely sang, is Friend to the Wounded. That's a beautiful. I wrote that with Claire Cloninger. Mm. Uh, I was in the studio singing. Uh, a friend of mine was producing Kim Boyce. You remember Kim Boyce? She was, she was a, like a rock and roll yeah, kind of gal. Yeah, and a beauty then. queen. She yeah. was Miss Florida or something uh -huh. like that. And uh, he, uh, she was recording at our studio in Houston. And my friend Brian Tankersley was producing her record. He said, hey, come sing back up with me on this record. So I went to the studio and we sang back up on a song Kim recorded called Here. And I can still remember how it went. But they went to dinner and they had this keyboard set up in the studio with these great big speakers. It just mm -hmm. sounded great. And I just sat down and played the chorus to Friend of Wounded Heart. Mm -hmm. And I'd never played it before. And I wrote the chorus, Jesus, he meets you where you are. Mm -hmm. Jesus, he heals your secrets, God. There. And then Claire, I, we didn't ever get together. I, I sent her a fax of the lyrics I had. Right. Remember the fax with yeah. the thermal paper That's that came out like a scroll? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and a cassette with the music on it. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a lot of the lyric. 
Wow. I mean, you have written countless songs. I'm sure how many? I could probably count them. Um, not as many as you would think. Probably uh, under 100. Uh, well, that's a lot. <laughs> I'm considering I've never written one. Well, there are a lot of them that you haven't heard yet. Oh. And a lot of them you will never hear. Well, you are still <laughs> singing and traveling. Yes. Right? Yeah. You know, and you have a family. Yes. You're a grandfather of how seven. Many? Seven ages are? 12, 10, 8. My youngest son has two sets of twins. Oh, my. Five-year-old wow. boy, girl, Will and Annabelle, and then two uh, identical girls. Oh, my goodness. Um, that are a year and a little over a year and a half. Goodness gracious. Yeah. So, and then your big announcement is that you just adopted. A year and a half ago, in March of 14, adopted a little boy. Mm. Brought him home when he was three days old. That is amazing. And he... There he is. There he is. Oh, he's <laughs> and adorable. That, and that face is him. That face is the way he is most times. Mm. And he just started to walk. And I told him some folks earlier, he, he started to walk about five weeks ago and he took a few steps and liked it and started running and went face down and bloodied his lip and, oh, no. and didn't take another step for two weeks. <laughs> I, I don't like this. <laughs> and like, oh. now he's walking around. And, oh, wow. What a new chapter. Yeah. That's a great chapter. So I, it's, it's wonderful to see how God is taking you and your wife. Yeah. into a, a, you're not, you could have just said, oh, I'm done being a dad and a grandpa, yeah. but you're being a, a dad to this beautiful, beautiful baby. I, I pray uh, pretty lofty prayers for him. I, mm. I pray that he'll be a world changer. Of course, we want him Amen. to be brilliant. We want him to yeah. be athletic and we want him to be talented and happy and joyful and friendly and have lots of friends and popular and all that. Mm -hmm. But I pray most of all that that he survived and that he is in this world, as we all are, to do something dramatic. Mm -hmm. And when he was three or four months old, he would sit in a little cradle in front of the window in his room and look out at the sky. And I just had this vision. I wonder if they see God mm -hmm. better than we do. I wonder if God is saying something to a three-month-old, because he would just look up in the sky mm -hmm. and wonder. And I thought, if not now, later, but you never know. Well, you know, your music has touched countless people and we're just so grateful that you're here with us and I'm just so thankful that you were able to share your story and also your new chapter Thank you. that's going on. Pleasure to be here. Thank yes, you, thanks for coming. There were watercolor ponies on my refrigerator door And the shape of something I don't really recognize Brushed with careful little fingers And put proudly on display A reminder to us all Wow stairway laced with toys gives a blow by blow reminder of the war that we fight for their well-being for the greater understanding to impart a holy reverence for the Lord back to me and you they look a little less like little boys every day and the pleasure of watching little children growing is mixed with a bitter cup of knowing that the water Little big 
victories come and go with no applause. But in the greater evaluation, when they fly from your nest of love, may they mount up with the wings as eagles for his call. You know, all these years, that's what I've been praying for. You ever wonder, hey, what are we going to do when it comes back to me and you? They don't look anything like little ones anymore these days. And the pleasure of watching little children Growing, it's mixed with a bitter cup of knowing that the watercolor ponies are gonna one day you look around and before you know it, one day they just rise. When I walk in darkness And I can't see my hand before me When my heart is aching And it's all I can do, just breathe I will sing for joy Joy of the Lord in the middle of it all. I will sing for joy. Joy of the Lord in the middle of it all. I will sing for joy. Probably sing all the verses. And heaven's walls are shaken. I will sing for joy, the joy of the Lord in the middle of it all. And I will sing, I will sing for joy, the joy of the Lord. What a songwriter. I really enjoyed his song, Watercolor Ponies. Thank you for watching More Than a Song. Contact us at family at ctvn.org or call us for prayer. Until next time, keep looking for the message behind the music and listen for the song he sings over you. I'm Denise Graves, and I'll see you next week. In the middle of it all, sing for joy. In the middle 